In this video, we are going to demonstrate implementation of a simple design on an FPGA evaluation board. We will first look at an overview of the Basis 3 board from Digilent which will be used for this exercise. If you do not have access to this board but have access to some other FPGA board, you can still perform the same experiments or carry out the same tests but you will have to adapt appropriately. We will look at some concepts that are being used in this design, namely the integrated logic analyzer and the virtual IO. Create a simple block design that incorporates a counter as well as the ILA and VIO. And finally, put everything on the board and test it in hardware. The board that we are using is the Basis 3 FPGA board. It's manufactured by Digilent. The board has a 100 megahertz onboard system clock an active high reset, 16 LEDs and slide switches, a 7 segment display, PMOD extensions and various other modifications. For our purposes, the system clock and some of the LEDs are primarily what we will be using for this demo. Now what is an ILA or an integrated logic analyzer? It uses the JTAG that is a joint test action group, it is a test protocol. And that's the connection that is normally used in order to program the FPGA. What the ILA does is, in addition, it also uses the same protocol to monitor internal signals on your design. It provides effectively something like a oscilloscope-like vision into the internals of the design on the FPGA, provided that you have connected the appropriate signals to the ILA. It's read-only, you cannot modify any of the signals using an ILA. And it is also synchronous, meaning that it samples internal signals based on some clock, you can specify which clock to use for the sampling. One thing to note, it uses FPGA block RAM resources and if your design is already occupying a large part of the FPGA resources, then you may want to use it with care as you may run out of block RAMs otherwise. VIO stands for virtual input output. This is once again another mechanism that is used to interact with an FPGA especially in situations where you do not have direct access to the push buttons or LEDs that can be used to monitor or send signals into the FPGA. It's again JTAG based and can be used to provide various kinds of inputs to the design. For example, multi-bit values can be directly typed in, push buttons can be emulated, toggle switches and so on. All of these are emulated by means of getting the same behavior through the virtual input output. These Things that are inputs to the design are called outputs of the VIO. So keep that in mind when you're talking about the terminology. Secondly, we can also monitor signals inside the design. Those would be called inputs of the VIO. Basically, they're outputs of the design that are then seen by the as inputs of the VIO and can be monitored. So what are we going to do in this demo? We will basically create a simple counter based block design, which will act as a divide by two power n counter. And the idea is that if you take a 100 megahertz clock and divide it by roughly 2 power 26, then you would get somewhere around a 1 hertz signal and you should be able to see that blinking on an LED. We will also connect up ILAs and VIOs to monitor the counter output. We will also use the VIA to enable the counter. Both of these, the ILA as well as, well as the VIO are basically just demonstrations to show you how these units can be used. We will start by creating a simple Vivado project. Just start Vivado and choose the option create project. I will just give it the default name project underscore one. It is an RTL project. We are not going to specify sources at the moment. So just click forward over here. As far as the part number is concerned we need to select the part number used on the basis board appropriately. If you have gone through the process of actually installing the board, the board files as described on the Digilent website, then you would probably find that the board itself is available over here for you as an option. But if not, you can always go to the parts section and type in the part number, namely XC7A35TCPG236 dash one. Once you have selected this, you can create the project. And the first thing we are going to do is to create a block design. 
once again I'll just let the default name stay design underscore one. Now we need to add some IP cores to this design which will then finally get implemented on the FPGA. We can press the plus button, search for a counter which basically brings up the binary counter and double click to add it. You can double click on this and customize it. We will change the output width to 32 bits and in the control tab we will activate the clock enable signal. Click OK. We are going to also add an ILA integrated logic analyzer. I will change this configuration. I am going to choose native instead of AXI and the probe port 0, the probe width can be set to 32 bits. I will next also add a VIO. and configure this with one input and one output. The input probe we will set it to have a bit width of 32 bits because we are going to look at the counter value here and the output can be left as it is at one bit. I am going to only use it for the clock enable signal. So now that we have added all of these units, the counter, the ILA as well as the VIO, we can basically connect their clock signals together. because they are all going to be driven by the same clock. We also have the output of the counter is going to be connected to the VIO as well as the ILA. And now we can run connection automation. It has created a clocking wizard, which basically takes in a 100 megahertz clock and will generate an appropriate clock at the output. Now this is strictly speaking not required for this design because we anyway have a 100 megahertz clock coming in. But in general is good practice because the clocking wizard is a PLL which can be used to change the internal frequency that is used. Connection automation, the clock and reset can now be made external signals. And in addition to this, what we can do is take the probe output of the VIO, connect it to the clock enable of the binary counter. I'll just click the regenerate layout to clean up the layout a little bit. And there's one more thing that we would like to do, which is to take the take four of the bits of the counter so that they can be connected to the external LEDs. That is done using a slice module. We can give a 32 bit input to the slice and we can say that the output is to be taken from bit number 26 to bit number 23, four bits and place this to the right of the counter connect the 32 bit value to the counter input, take the D out value and right click and make external. Once again, just regenerate the layout to clean things up and you can see that the entire design is now in place. Just for clarity, we might probably want to rename some of these signals. We can, for example, call this reset signal and the clock underscore 100 megahertz can be called sys underscore clock. This is not essential. This is just for convenience. Similarly, the D out zero can be renamed as LEDs. This is just more for our convenience than for anything else. Click on the validate design button over here. There is no errors or critical warnings. Okay. So go and save the block design. And once we go to the sources tab, we can right click on design underscore one and choose the option to create an HDL wrapper. Leave the option as it is, let Vivado manage the wrapper and auto update. Click OK. And a very long file will be created over here, design underscore one underscore wrapper dot V. We don't really need to worry about that file. Now, we are almost at the point where we can put things on the board. Of course, there is still some time required to compile it for the board, but there is one further step that is required, namely specifying which pins are to be used on the FPGA for each of the external ports, the reset, the system clock and the LEDs. Mm -hmm. To do that, first we need to run the synthesis 
we can just go ahead and launch synthesis over here. The synthesis would take some a reasonable amount of time, probably a couple of minutes at least. After it's done, we can open the synthesized design. Once you open the synthesized design, you can select the layout and go for IO planning. This is important because as you will see over here, this indicates at in the bottom panel, the ports that are available to you. There is a clock port with sys underscore clock. There are four LED scalar ports values over here, LED 3, 2, 1 and 0. And then finally, there is a reset port. As you can see, there are the current IO standard is marked as default, but it's showing up in red. This is indicative of the fact that it does not, it will not accept this for the final design. You need to specify it explicitly as the correct value. Similarly, the package pins have not been specified over here. We need to do both of those. Now, how do we get the package pins that are to be used for this design? The best way to do it is to go to the reference manual of the basis three board. From the Digilent website, you can download the reference manual. And as you can see, the reference manual has a lot of information about the capabilities of the board. Once we open the reference manual of the Digilent board, we need to first search for the clock signal. You can do this by searching within the PDF file. And as you can see over here, it mentions that pin W5 is where a single 100 megahertz oscillator is connected. It is also at a 3.3 volt CMOS signal, which we can find out from the reference manual by looking further. So what I'm going to do is to go ahead and change the setting for the clock signal. First of all, to LV CMOS 33 and change the pin package pin location to W5. You will see that the red signal has now gone away over here. There are a few more signals we need to connect, the LEDs and the reset. As far as the reset signal is concerned, we will use one of the push buttons available on the board as a reset signal. In practice, we don't really need to do it since we are assuming an active high LE uh, reset and we can just pretty much ignore this signal, but we do need to connect it somewhere. So what typical convention as far as this board is concerned is to use button C, which is connected to U18 as a reset signal. That's the central button among the five push buttons. Once again, change the standard to LV CMOS 33 and the reset itself can be set to U18. Now on the same page over here, you will also see that there are LEDs U16, E19, U19 and V19 would be the bottom four LED signals. We can specify those for the four LED values that we have. Change all their settings to LV CMOS 33. and give the values as U16, E19, U19, and V19. Now all the pins on our design have been successfully specified. The next thing we can do is straight away go to the next step, which is of course, implementation and afterwards we would need to generate the bitstream. I'm going to straight away go ahead and generate the bitstream at one shot. Save all the constraints. We need to specify a file into which to save the constraints. Just choose any name that you want. And it will ask you saying that the synthesis is out of date. Why did that happen? Because we specified constraints. The moment we specify constraints, it feels it has to redo the synthesis. Okay, yes, we can just accept that launch the selected synthesis, go ahead. The bitstream generation process takes considerably longer than synthesis, about 10 minutes in my case. Now that you have done with open the bitstream generation, you can move on to the next step, which would be to open the hardware manager. What we do over here is now click on open target, auto connect. Please note that in order to get the correct behavior of the hardware manager and to identify the device properly, 
you would need to have installed the device drivers appropriately. This can be done either from the Xilinx software itself or in some cases from the Digilent website. This is out of the scope of this demonstration. Please make sure that you have them installed. Otherwise, you would not see anything when you open the hardware target. The part number that we see is the XC7835D, which is the Arctic 7 FPGA present on the basis board. What we will do now is to right click on it and select the option program device. It shows the option for the bitstream file and that should be in the directory that you created. It should be something called design underscore one underscore wrapper dot bit. There will be also another file called a debug probes file. This contains information related to the VIO and the ILA which is used in the system. That would be design underscore one under wrapper dot LTX. Make sure that both of these are appropriately from the correct directories that you have chosen. Program. Now that we have programmed this, you will see that there are two tabs over here, the HWILE and the HWVIOs. Let's select the VIOs, click on the plus button, select both of these probes and click OK to add them over here. What you will notice is that the first one is marked as an input and the second one is marked as an output and nothing is actually changing over here. right? The reason for that is because the output VIO which we have connected as the clock enable is actually zero which means that the counter is not currently operational. If we go back to the ILA tab and click on the run trigger for this ILA, the triangle button, we will find that the value is stuck at zero. So let's go back to the VIOs. We can right click on the probe out and convert it to a toggle button. This makes it a little easier for us to change values. Now it has the value zero. Let's click once and straight away you can see that the counter binary is starting to change value. When you go to the HWILA and now click on the triangle button, you will find that it shows there is a continuous sequence of values that it is going through. In other words, the counter is incrementing as expected. Within a very short duration, you would find that actually the number of bits of the 32 bit counter that have already been accumulated is fairly uh, that have been modified is fairly large. This is of course because it's a 100 megahertz clock. Go back to the VIOs, stop and you find that immediately the counter binary behavior also stops. The HWILA button now shows a constant value, the last value before the counter was stopped. You would also have noticed that the LEDs themselves are blinking. There are four LEDs that are blinking, all of them at different rates. And this serves to confirm that the 100 megahertz clock is being divided by an appropriate value, which brings it into the visible range for us to see it blinking. This concludes the hardware demo. As you can see, what we went through was to start up Vivado, target a particular board, put a VIO and an ILA as well as a counter on that block design and use that in order to just demonstrate the basic behavior of how something can be put on hardware as well as some of the tools, the VIO and ILA that can be used in order to debug a design working directly on hardware.